in the scriptures a group of four determined fellows you know they are actually unsung heroes because even their names are not mentioned but we learn about we learn their concern and sacrifice for a hurting comrade and let's pick up very quickly some aspects of fellowship seen through these four unnamed men firstly they were you i tried to get that picture for you four comrades carrying this their friend the fifth friend on that pallet you can see they four all four of them had to balance the weight of that man lest he tumbled over you see they here they had to do it well so they were initially they were men of compassion their hearts went out to this man in need they were men of conviction they believed that if if this their friend could get some real help if he could get if they could get him to jesus so they had this conviction so they created a way they came the doorway was blocked no way was anybody willing to give uh, give uh, give uh, room for them to get in so they went beyond the normal and the ordinary method of meeting jesus me uh, of coming to jesus they were men of cooperation you know each one worked and walked in coordination with each other each one had a corner of that makeshift pallet you saw that of that makeshift bed each one and they had they had to balance out the weight they were not in competition nor was their you know self centeredness uh, or exhibitionism or anything like that they were they acted out of deep devotion and concern and you find they were men of commitment they were determined to get their friend to jesus despite all the setbacks how are we these guys had four things in common they had the same friend they had the same challenge couldn't get in they had the same attitude whatever it takes we are going to take our friend to the feet of jesus most importantly they had the savior to be met with they had they, that was their desire so the four fellow helpers together will accomplish by the power of the holy spirit what not, what neither one two or three were competent to do they needed the fourth one isn't that so when the fourth one came along and grasped the bed and gave it a hearty lift then only will the paralyzed friend be laid in the savior's path i want to ask you i as i ask myself how are we do we speak up for our for our friends who are paralyzed in different ways you know it's be wonderful if all of us growing here in brookside family have little bands of men and women bound to each other in christ maybe through our care cells be, be uh, you know by zealous love for for souls outside our community our immediate family members you know if we would carry them to the lord jesus christ this man had palsy it was basically impossible for him to get to jesus on his own so there are multitudes of people in a state of spiritual and physical paralysis out there in the world not necessarily lifeless in the limbs but with chronic fears paralyzed unable to move forward with mental anguish with enormous debts overbearing addictions you have people around you even as i speak i know you will think of some of these people last just last week i met uh, a young widowed mom whose son 16 17 year old young fellow you know disturbed his studies and she told me you know you look at my body every part of my body has been assaulted by my son she said everywhere i have been throttled i have been hit she showed me her hands like this and said i have been assaulted see the anguish of that young mother there i came across so many in anguish another young younger mother in in this so much despair has things but so much despair and i last week i shared this in the evening congregation last week 10 days ago we had a little boy that was brought to the rainbow home and he 
um, he, you know, the authorities bring them, uh, bring him to us through the courts. And when he came in, he, he was howling. We are used to children crying when they are left behind with us in a strange place. But this little fellow was different. He howled and he cried and he cried. He was inconsolable. He hung on those officers, the probation officers and some other officers who had come in their uniform. He hung on them. He worshipped them. And he said, please, please take me back to my mother. Because she said that she will throw herself in front of the train if she were to lose me. Such is the anguish of the little nine-year-old boy. There are people in anguish all over. Mental anguish, little nine-year-old fellow. Dear brothers and sisters, let our faith be effective. Let it be of use in this world. And Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2 says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, it may be just be, I'm going to wind up first. It may just be that you will have to do something drastic and out of the ordinary. It may even ruffle the feathers of some people, those around you. You know, they may look at you and say, hey, fanatical Christianity, what's this? You know, too much in the church. You have heard these things? It may be that. But let's see this morning, as I wind up, how serious we are about getting someone to Jesus and to get a breakthrough in that life. I can recall, I'm not going to mention, some people who go on and on and on with one person till the breakthrough comes. You know, let's work to bring people who are out there, mental anguish, can't, they cannot voice it. They put on, they dress well and smile, but their heart is beating with pain. Every time it says lub dub, it's pain, pain, pain. So I want to plead that we come out of this selfie image of church. And Mark chapter 2 and verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, the paralyzed man, he said, son, your sins are forgiven. When Jesus saw the faith of the four men. Jesus was moved to make the man whole because of the active faith of the four men. Dear church family, dear brothers and sisters, let's remove the lid of human limitations. Whatever the obstacle, it can be penetrated. There's nothing that prayer, love cannot penetrate. Let's not be too stiff and too strict or do, you know, eye for an eye and tit for tat. To, sure, we try to follow a code of ethics, but then there are desperate times that call for desperate measures. We can't let someone go into a, a pit of darkness. It seemed that all normal entrances were blocked and barred, but they had come too far, the four men had come too far to turn back and drop the men, man down and run away. They did the unthinkable. They broke the roof and brought this, that one soul, one soul to the presence of Christ. That's what they did. The door was barred, it was jam-packed, but they came, found another way. Very exceptional, sure, but they found a way. And that's the power and effect of fellowship in Christ Jesus. In conclusion, it comes very strongly to us that one of the purposes or intentions of fellowship with one another isn't only that we bear the burdens of each other, which is actually excellent in itself, but we also are called, because we have fellowship one with another, to free the paralyzed in life, those who cannot walk on their own feet, to bring them to Jesus. Fellowship within always attracts those who are outside. And I want to, I really don't know how to conclude this, uh, this message this time. I really don't know. 
but I want you to please rise to your feet and uh, commit yourselves to create a culture of care, share and bear each other even when, when it's inconvenient. Please stand to your feet. A, a, a covenant of inconvenience. I call it a covenant of inconvenience. It's more than a promise. A covenant is more than a promise. It's not a contract, but it's a covenant. Come what may, we will work through it. You know my father, he was a, a lawyer and he was addicted to alcohol for 27 long years. And I was a young child, suffering. You know, there were times when hate and bitterness was taking over. But when I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, I hate and bitterness was taking over because of the shame, the horror of having a father, a father, dad, who is alcoholic and very aggressive. And then as I gave my heart to Jesus and I came to know the Christ and I learned fellowship, I came, I was baptized and I came into a family of God. You know, I began to pray. I was only 13 years when I came to know the Lord and I prayed for eight long years and I saw my father gloriously saved when I was 21 plus years old. One, there's nothing that love cannot overcome. May we commit ourselves to being covenantal friends with our Lord Jesus Christ and with one another. Shall we lift up a heart? I'll ask Brother Ali to please come and help. May you, in the silence of this time, just make a commitment with your Father in heaven. Lord, we repent and we ask forgiveness for many lost opportunities. Lord, we feel the grief of those whom we know and the general grief out there. Forgive that I could live so untouched. Lord, we are asking you that your servant, your minstrel, brought to us the word from the Father's heart. She not only brought it from the word of God, she brought it from the Father's heart. So we allow that word to sink in, soak in, sensitize us, that when we go back we will be never the same. Lord, Please move in between our set ways, just the way the salt molecules move in. Please, Lord, let this word salt us. We know that salt stinks. Putting salt on a wounded place is hurtful. But we are saying, hurt us for good. That we may be healed of self we exist. Forgive us the many adjustments that we do, that we maintain status quo in inertia. We want to be touched today. We want to be sacrificed today. We want to be favored with the word that came to this by the Lord that came to this, by the fear that came to this. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we want to be touched, sensitized, moved into 
So. From this place, after reflecting, maybe the policeman at the gate. Thank you. Maybe the policeman at the gate, or those who checked our temperature while we were coming in, or some beggar who will stop at the traffic light that today on our way, shall we say today on our way, we will have a chance to practice the koinonia, connected to Christ, fellowshipping with one another, touched by the infirmities outside. Help us Lord, we will not forget this message. Through the week, the salt will work till the light comes out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please be seated for a few moments. Uh, I want to say, let's give a hand clap for that message, but yeah. Actually, hand clap is not enough, isn't it? It was a deep, deep message. Few things, uh, keep election times in prayer, there are communities that feel fearful. We need to take their fear and keep the atmosphere full of shalom. You can't move into fear. You can't move into anger, okay? No criticisms. Less you see the television, the better it is. We move into shalom, peace, isn't it? We move in the opposite spirit because if we become like that spirit, we are not helping at all. So uh, be alert in prayer. From now onwards, be alert in prayer. Uh, you missed a very important Bible study yesterday. Please don't do this. When a Bible study is announced after five months of such a difficulty that the country went through, you went missing. Don't do this hereafter. Is that understood? Understood? Yeah. Don't miss Bible studies. They pitch a direction for the church in very, very difficult times. Uh, then, Hiranti said some things that we can, Pastor Hiranti said something that we can share. Sometimes we can share tuition, isn't it? Tuition, isn't it? Physics is a very difficult subject because uh, we, you understand what I mean by share intuition? There may be an O-level boy. Who can become a doctor or engineer if he does well in physics. And those parents may be living in a hut. I, I am not talking. Theory we have to handle 24 rainbow boys. There's one called Tusita who was so good in his brain but he flopped, got involved with a bit of drugs when he was doing all level. We sent him to the NBQ uh, process, thank God for government, thank God for the NBQ process. They gave him an interview, sized him up and put without all level, he crashed the all level, no match, nothing. But they put him into a auto air conditioning course that teaches physics. Now he's employed. And uh, at level one, you can get about 7,000 a month. At level two, six months studies, six months work. Level, by the time you are level three, you get about 20,000. Level five is degree level. You can be employed anywhere in the world, but we do not encourage employment anywhere in the world. God birthed you in a country to be employed in your country. That's one story. Now we have a Joshua, good brain. And again, they flop at O-level. 
it's Olival is a deciding examination state. So somehow their fatherlessness comes up at Olival. So capable. I've sat with them, spoken to them. Their brain is pretty good, but that they had no father, they had no mother. Because at Rainbow, we can do so much and no more. So just giving you an idea of what you can share, isn't it? Tushan, huh? Yeah. Uh, how big should the church be? How big was the first century church, first church in Jerusalem, numbers wise? How big was the first century church? I really want to. How big was the church in the upper room? 120, 120. Uh, that, of course, they were all adults, isn't it? There were 12 initially, one reneged. His name was? Judas was missing. 12 initially, so 11. Everybody brought 10 to the faith. That's your target. Just bring how many to the faith, Chamat? 10. ten. And 10 law students. I think it's much easier to bring 10 law students than bringing 10 medical students. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, 10 to the faith. So 110 there would be how, you know, let's say 110. Add to that their wife, 110. Some wives may have been there. Mary was there. But most likely not many wives were there. You got the context, huh? So 220. If, if there's two to a family, another 220, that would be 440. That is max to feel like family. You get the point? But we think about 300, 360, you could feel, you get what I mean? You could feel together, you could feel together. More than that, it will be a crowd. So t church is precious. Today's message was that, when you can feel together. Uh, so with our singular congregation, English, two English congregations, and uh, t small Tamil congregations, we are about 400 or more. So in a sense, we are full, though you see a lot of gaps here. In a sense, our heart space could be full to feel together. But you need to know each other. And uh, we were told today, be included as much as possible. Now, getting included is my business. Getting included is my business. Which means, don't, don't say, they didn't include me. Include yourself. Bring a cake. Better bring some tandoori chicken. If that's messy, bring a packet of cashew nut. Just some ways in getting included. So, so you get what, what we are trying to be. We are trying to be about 400 max, but having koinonia and fellowship together. And note the last thing, um, one thing that our pastor said, some are called to teach. You see, some are called to sing. Don't get this mixed up, Krishna. Okay, some are called to teach. Some, he is called to teach. I'm called to sing. That's how it goes. God bless you. Thank you for making House of God. One more clap for Hiranti. It was really, really good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, we have to sing something, isn't it? You're ready. We'll just rise to our feet and feel together. Honor our worship team also.
एवरीवन फॉर जॉइनिंग एस टुडे